Thanks, Gwyneth. We'll look forward to your interviews with the other gubernatorial candidates in the weeks to come. Right now, it's time for more opinions and insights on the candidates with our line panelists. So, Stephen, let me ask you a question. Pete Domenici Jr. may be the real wild card in this race. He's still a bit of a mystery, taking away his last name, certainly. What did you learn or what did you glean? Same question I asked uh, about Arnold Jones earlier, but what did you glean from the interview here tonight? A it, nice long look, so to speak. It, it seems to me like he is not using the best argument that he has, which is he's son of Pete. He's son of St. Pete. So he should be doing that. I believe he should. I think okay. he should say, you know, I sort of have a compelling life story. I've been around this man. This man knows New Mexico. He brought goodies to New Mexico. Mm -hmm. He treated all people fairly. He was good to the Hispanic community, the general community. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm going to be, too. That's what I learned under the old man's uh, tutelage. Mm -hmm. That's what I can do. Because it, it doesn't seem to me like he has an incredible personal connection with voters. He doesn't seem to want to run on issues. He's mm -hmm. does, you know, what's your takeaway on the issues that he thinks are important that he's going to change? I, he doesn't really mention any. So I think what he needs to do, my view is, he, he needs to emphasize, son of St. Pete, this is what I can do. I can be, I'm a moderate, I can win, I can beat Dennis. Kind of the Kennedy card. They yeah, have a way of that's doing right. that, don't they? run on that right. before you that's see, right, you right. see wives of, A lot sure, of dynasties absolutely. run on that. Sure, yeah. Yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Does that make sense to you, given the Well, gosh, I mean, sure. you know, you sort of wonder if that isn't what he thinks he's doing, but it's, it's perhaps not overt enough. Mm -hmm. um, He's traveling with his father. Correct, correct. Mm -hmm. But, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, this it, it doesn't seem like he's he's fully there. Like he's he's fully in. I mean, I don't mean that in sure. an insulting way, but just kind of in a like you know, bring bring the issues, bring bring your passion, talk about what um, changes you might make. I mean, really get in there. Sure. Um, and if your message is more of what you knew, then go there too. Mm -hmm. But Jim, you know, I'm really interested in what Stephen said because it, 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 that's a, do you throw that card now? Do you throw that card later? Do you, do you avoid it completely? That's a very interesting proposition that Stephen's laying out. It, it, Why not go for the gusto and, and just do what everyone sees anyway? Well, I don't know, Steve. Maybe you should go into the business here because the problem, <laughs> the problem Pete Domenici Jr. has is this. He's a very smart guy, very careful in his thinking. Sure. The Arizona immigration bill, he read it all. He broke it down into the five separate sections. I mean, he, he's a smart lawyer. He dealt with really arcane areas of the law. Environmental regulations, you know, make your eyes bleed. Um, but, um, but then again, for every other candidate, I think you can associate one word with, with each one of them. I mean, just think in your own mind, Alan Way, you know, tough, what, you know, whatever it would be, Janice Arnold Jones, reform, you know, uh, Susanna Martinez, prosecutor, Doug Turner, I think maybe ideas, mm -hmm. you know, innovation. Mm -hmm. Pete Domenici Jr., Domenici. the word is Pete. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> the word is Domenici. And why not be upfront about it? Because um, if, if that's the best thing he's got going for him, his job is to win. His job, unless, I don't know if he's positioning himself to run for something else after this, too. That's a possibility, just introducing himself. But mm -hmm. going around the state and saying, I'm going to continue the same sort of policies, I've been inspired, since that's the subtext pretty much anyway. And I've, I've heard from Republican activists who like him, um, he, he, you know, again, I don't think he has any enemies, mm -hmm. um, but they're a little bothered, bothered thinking he's trading on a, a great man's name without having paid dues himself, which I don't think is entirely fair because he did stand up for the small businesses. His law practice was tough, representing the little guy against a state government. That was, his, that was how he made his living. He didn't, he, I'll say this, he never let go, I know some of those cases, he never let go of one of those little businesses. Mm -hmm. He stick with them for a decade. But in terms of winning, you know, maybe the best thing he's got going is that pledge, be upfront about it, and then you don't have to create a whole image because you basically you borrow it. the whole brand with him. Yeah, yeah. I mean, let's face that. it, like Obama and he doesn't had a have life much, story. Yeah. McCain had a life right. story. It, we're, this is, the this Kennedys is his life had a story. life story. Right, right. Right. That's, that's and then, his after, then he can develop himself, you know, more fully. You know, we're talking about po you know, political campaign mm -hmm. mention, not issues, you know, real substantive issues here. But he's got to win. He doesn't have much time. He doesn't have, you know, a ton of money. Uh, to spend. It's not a bad idea mm -hmm. to consider, and I don't see any downside to it. Sure, sure. But I, I have to ask this question. It, we've all had a good time, not at just this table, but people that watch politics closely here in New Mexico, beating up on what he isn't. Are we being a little unfair to this man at this point? Well, I, no, I think you know, I just said it. I mean, he's tenacious. Yeah. I think he's principled. 
But you know, he's lo he's those, loyal. I hear you though, but those those attributes are not coming across. It's the style points that people are questioning. Yeah. Are, are we being unfair to judge this man too much on style versus substance? Because you're talking about substance. Yeah, I think so. Because um, take a look at Gary Johnson's style when he came out of nowhere against mm -hmm. the party's picked candidate. Who does anybody remember who it was? Dick Cheney was the candidate the party picked from Farmington. Gary Johnson was <laughs> as unpolished as any politician had ever broken on the scene, sure. and yet the people like that. And I think there's something about candidates that are too polished and too slick, at least in this state, that people turn off. Mm -hmm. Gary Carruthers, the only times the Republicans have had success recently is when they've had the unpolitician. Gary Carruthers was the economics mm -hmm. professor. His campaign ad was, I'm not a lawyer or a politician. That's all he said, and he won. Sure. Um, and may, you know, so maybe, I, you know, I don't think you should be that harsh on somebody because you know, they're not a, uh, you know, a stump speaker. Right. But um, it's clear he's very thoughtful. Mm -hmm. um, he, he's, he's a heck of a nice guy if you get to meet him. I mean, he's got a big heart in him just like his father. We've just got a minute left. Sophie, what do you, what do you think of that? And but also I, add I in... Hear, I hear the nice guy and I hear the big heart and all of that, but I think um, this is an election. This mm -hmm. is a campaign. And it's a fight. It's exactly. It's a fight. And I just don't see him fighting in that way. There feels like a complacency almost um, about his, his candidacy that, um, you know, this is a party that is not in power. And so they need somebody who can take, get through the primaries What's and take them through. What's your message? What's the change you exactly. want to make? That's exactly. what we're not getting through. And why can you win? Yeah. And why, why can you win? win? Exactly. Back to what we were discussing before, absolutely. Exactly. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of scuttle. Again, just a few seconds left here. He would make a great cabinet secretary. He'd make a great, you know, whatever. And I, I ask again, is that fair or unfair? And let me finish where I started you with Stephen. You know, can he make a credible case through the primary and then in the general that, look, I may be coming up short in the bread and circuses of politics, but I'm going to be steady at the helm. I'm going to be a steady guy at the wheel. Is that, is that a sell? Can people respond to that? Well, Consider I think if you're going to try to sell that, you've got to point to something. Yeah. And he needs to point to some prior leadership experience. He has to point to some type of evidentiary basis for saying that. Mm -hmm. And that's what didn't come across in the interview. Mm -hmm. Now, it's probably his first interview like that. I think so, so I think we've got to give him time. I think just as Jim said, Gary Johnson was not polished when he first came up. He's probably going to do a lot better in future interviews. Mm -hmm. I think one of these people, Jones, Arnold Jones, or Domenici, needs to go negative soon. We've got about a month left. Mm -hmm. How are they going to distinguish themselves? How are they going to catch Way and Martinez? They need to do something. And they, they don't have enough money to go over over the air media. Mm -hmm. How are they going to do it? They need to go negative and distinguish themselves or they're going to lose. So yeah. they need to do something big. Sure. Now, we've got more of our interviews with Pete Domenici Jr. on our website. Just head to KNME.org and look for the New Mexico in Focus link.